doing a whole thing on grading and on uh, uh -huh. standards-based grading. And so several board members went to hear the presentations. Okay. Before we leave the request for the information form. No, okay. We're doing the request for the approval. We're doing this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, gotcha. Okay. Strike that question. Okay. Strike it? No. Okay. And again, so I think this pretty well tracks with everything we've just been talking about. I guess the, and I guess we'll eventually get to the years. So if, it, if this is an event that the board vice president is asking to attend, I mean, are they the approving authority? For no, I think we should not. The, pres the president is the approving authority. Or vice Okay. I'll just. Right. Uh, I'll just close your book. Well, no, I mean, that's the approving Well, no, I mean, that's, I think that issue in terms of approving each other's and, you know, what happens in. Uh, Yeah, ultimately, when we get to the street resolution issue, I think we're, we're going to have to address that question. But why don't we hold off on that? Until okay. We... For processing purposes, should there be a timeline in terms of the submission? It says, um, it says in, the in, the in the instructions, no later than two weeks prior to the date of conference meeting. For so, I mean, again, we're saying two weeks. Again, this, I guess, will have to be an understanding, a shared understanding with people that if it's not submitted within, you know, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. we don't accept it unless there's some, obviously, incredible at the same way. So, like a ticket event came in. It just came like, or something. This, but, is, this is something next week. Right. And, uh, I'm sure that happens. It does. Um, I mean, it does. <laughs> but, I mean, I think this is trying to because, set the standard. No, I agree. Well, because on like conference registrations, there's generally, yes. you know, you register early, there's one now, and then there's a late registration fee. And right. the other thing is if you're talking about air travel, I mean, right. if, you're ma if you decide this late, right. you're going to, the system would be paying higher airline fees. Right, and I think that could be a factor mm -hmm. in the pre-approval that, um, Yes, you submitted. Yes, this may align with board processes, but uh, the difference between the advance price of if you had submitted it earlier versus the price at the last minute may be a determinative factor. In right. The I think that process. needs to be expressed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe cost is added as a factor right. in the pre approval process. Okay. Okay. So then the next sort of process area would be reimbursement requests. So board member requests for all reimbursements other than mileage, that's in a separate pot, must be made using the request for the, the draft new request for reimbursement expense, uh, reimbursement of expenses paid by board member form. So again, this is now this other form that we generated. Um, and then again, this would list out exactly what the processes are for that. And this is reimbursement. So now the board member has already paid for the activity event with their own method of payment, their own personal Cash. method of payment, Direct whatever method they Cash, choose whatever. to use. And so now you're, the, this form requesting reimbursement, we're saying, would need to be submitted to the office no later than the first business day of the next month of the prior month's expenses. So we're trying to, you know, allow for board members maybe not being in the office on a regular basis as our staff. Or you're but you're essentially allowing 30 days. Essentially allowing 30 days. Do we need to clarify that you don't get it in 30 days? You're not getting it? Yeah, I mean, yes, I think so. That's, that's the cutoff. I mean, if you don't get it in time, you don't get reimbursed. I, I mean, I... Yeah. What, I mean, when right. I worked for Woody's, I understand. they they had a rule on mileage. Right. If you didn't, you know, you had to turn it in 
the first and the next one. We had a 10 day grace period. And, there, and if you didn't get it in, you didn't get reimbursed. And there is an extenuating circumstance to that. So if somebody were deadly ill, right. um, there would be allowed. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, giving a little more latitude, contemplate board members not being here, that you do not have a full time job, and you do not have an office in this building, right. here, so it contemplates that. All right, then. Um, so, okay, so. We are sort of like defining what we say right now for expenses, uh, reimbursement. Right now, the handbook talks about what's the purpose. So we're, we're sort of like, say, okay, just check the box. We're not asking you to say, well, I met with. No, we are. I'm, no, we're I, well, I'm saying. So, so under, after the type of expense, the purpose, it's briefly described, including names of other participants if applicable. How the expense promotes board priorities and aligns with the work of the board. I think that if applicable leaves a big hole. Okay. I mean, I, um, I you know, I, I think it should be a given, not a if applicable. I, I think that the if applicable meant if it was something that involved other participants. That may be just a grammar issue because there could be an expense here that you're seeking where oh. it didn't involve any other participant. So if applicable is about whether or not there was a someone else participating you with you when you made the expense. Not that you're paying for that person. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there's another way to write that to make that more clear. We can, I, I hear what you're saying. Right. And I, I think maybe we should just have a line for it. If there's other participants, you know okay. the name, you know, a line for that, not just sort of capture it in the mm -hmm. In the paragraph, because okay. so we get more than student, constituent, okay. whatever. I mean, you have to actually name the other participant, and which I think is the form. I just think it's important to note that this form contemplates that there'll be one form submitted for each reimbursement request. So you could not, for example, put um, all three types of expenses on one form. It would have to be one form for each reimbursement. So if you take a cab to have a meal and then you need to, I don't know, um, buy a, a kind of, um, charger on the way home, that cab is one form, the meal is another form, that expense for supplies. And in terms of the role of the board staff, well, Becky, when she gets these things, she's just looking to see that all the boxes are checked and the receipts are checked. She's not making judgment calls as to whether or not it's appropriate. She just, she's really just processing the paperwork. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it was this that has a sign off by the chief of staff, the board vice, board vice, board vice president, and is, and is currently the case that the superintendent of the designee has signed off on the well, first process. Why the superintendent sign off? That's the way it's been. That's been the current process. On reimbursements. Yeah. I'm not always a big believer in but that's the way it's been as, okay. a, as a response. I'm not taking a yeah, shot yeah, at yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 well, somebody, I don't, somebody assigned it in his office. I mean, what, why? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, but I'm just, I'm just because saying. Because it triggers the disbursement of funds from MCC. So if, if, if the superintendent or designee does not sign it, then there's no disbursement of funds? Are we saying that? Not, you know, the mileage, the internet, those, you know, you pay out, you pay for an event and the system is reimbursing you, it's, that is, that's how I guess I'm curious. I, I, I just don't see the, the superintendent being the arbiter or part of the arbiter of, of these forms. I don't know that they're the arbiter, but I well, think that's, well, the, in, the, that's in the, the trigger. Question, to they're in the loop. The question is what triggers the dispute resolution process? So, I mean, so, so the more? chief of staff. Or the vice president approves the superintendent or the designee disapproves, then it goes to the 
board president under this process to basically make the final call. But what if the board president makes the final call and then the superintendent still says, I don't agree? I guess I remain unconvinced that there's no way to disperse the funds without the, the superintendent. You know, the superintendent always reminds us he is our only employee. So we have the employee approving the employer's request. I, I just find that ambiguous. I guess the question is, what process? And by the way, he has not been part of the credit no. card process. I mean, yeah. those. I mean, it's. Those expense logs, the superintendent's office is here. All right, we do not. But the reimbursement. Other expenses. Other, other expenses have been, that's how it's been. But Pat, are you, are you saying that you think part of that is because the comptroller or whoever actually cuts the check, the processes they have requires a line from the superintendent because that's what happens with every other expense that comes through this organization when you think of it that that's way. That's what I'm thinking. Right, that's what you're thinking. And so some of this may just be current practices for a check to actually get written. And I'm hearing you say, well, perhaps in this circumstance, there needs to be some other mechanism for the check to get written, assuming that it's gotten approval among, you know, based on the process. But as we said, we can have an issue where the superintendent says no and the board says yes. I mean, it's a modification of the form such that it's clear the, um, the vice president is approving and then the, the signature of the superintendent really is, you know, ready for processing or process for payment or, you know, some designation. But, right. He's not approving. He's just Right. And, and again, maybe it doesn't have to be there on every form. It's, it's when you roll these up to the, because you have, this, this does not contemplate a check for every one of these expenses, a $2 parking seat, a $1.50 this. It would be public for the month. They would then get accumulated up together and accumulated. And so then that would be where. Well, they're going to have to have a signature on each one of these. No, no, but I'm talking about on the superintendent's signature. It, his or her or the designees is for the amount once it's they can approve the rolled up amount that the check would be written for. Then I don't have Then a that's not clear with this form. I understand we have to change this based on this Right. I mean I the, I think the superintendent or his designee is approving for payment. You know, I, I I don't I mean I think in terms of MCPS you know, as a large institution, I think that's, you know, whether it's, it, that signature is, is there for the purpose that it, you know, all the boxes have been checked and it's been approved and it is okay for payment. So, so current, let's say, let's make it simple. Um, current mileage, a monthly mileage reimbursement goes to who right now or for, for well I, I, I turn I give it to Becky right. Becky I'm not sure if I know what happened here but it's, it's, signed, it's signed by the chief of staff I believe uh, of the board right. um, and then it's signed I believe by the um, superintendent's designee and then it goes down to the controller's office and who is the designee um, that's been the yeah, chief of staff. Specifically chief been the chief of staff. Of the it's it's, it's handed on the form. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 here's the, the current form. So, you know, this would be you, this would be, you know, Lord, and this would be the account manager. This is, this is the name on, this, on the standard form, and so that would be the superintendent's chief, chief of staff. And then it goes to. So we want to take the superintendent's basically judgment in terms of the process. Okay. He's just really processing for technical compliance. Almost he's doing the same thing as Becky's doing. Get on to verify that it's been approved. 
through the uh, board process. about a dispute resolution process on the pre approvals. You have it included in the on the reimbursement process, but you don't really reference a dispute resolution process for pre approvals. Um, actually if I can refer you to the um, draft compensation and expense standards number one, it talks about okay, um, about this form here. Right, no, I'm sorry. It is um, in the uh, expense standards part where it talks about how the uh, recommendations that the vice president uh, do the approval uh, and then the board president along with the chief of staff shall provide pre-approval of expenditures by the board president in the event that an expenditure is denied through the pre-approval pre process, the board member may follow the dispute resolution processes outlined below. And then the dispute resolution process at the end of the standard says, if there should a question arise as to whether an expense is permitted under these guidelines, the matter should be referred to the board president for a, ru a ruling, and then it may be referred to the full board. Okay. Well, okay. Separate question. This doesn't mm -hmm. talk about the board member being able to go to the full board. It just says that the board president may refer to the matter to the full board. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so, so we have, so we we have, have a question. dispute right now. I mean, yeah. I mean no, no, following the process, you know, on, 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 on the makeup, make you know, we deny it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and the board member wants to go to the full board. Mm -hmm. So, under this, would that be allowed, or would that, you know, I mean. Can I just say it depends? Because, again, this, where we're at now in this particular juncture of time would be different than, let's say, after this, the list of conferences were pre-approved. So if in that pre-approval of the conferences, MAKO was on that list and the board agreed, nope, we're not going to pre-approve this item, the board member who still wants to go with MAKO has to live with that decision. So um, let's say, for example, MAKO wasn't on that list. I'm fine, it's hard to believe, but it wasn't on that initial universe of list and the person came in for pre-approval and um, it was then denied, they would then have the opportunity to go to the full board um, as part of the dispute resolution process. Well, that being said, I mean, this stuff, right now this doesn't say that because it just says that the board, the board president can refer the matter to the full board. It doesn't say that the board member can basically file an appeal of no, the... No, I think it should uh, be, uh, they, uh, they have the right to appeal the board. Mm -hmm. And when we say four votes, we're assuming that the student member doesn't vote in these? Right. Yeah, it's fine. I just... Yeah. Not saying this, the student member, that probably also needs to be clarified as well. Because generally they don't involve... The vote doesn't generally count on matters that involve um, money. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and I was just going to say, do throw it out there, do we want board members to be able to appeal these pre-approval decisions to the full board? You know, I mean, you know. But I thought you, you said they're participating already in the agreement on what's pre-approved. So then there are people. Well, that, let's, so let's say, let's say, the say I realize, but, yeah, but I'm just saying if there's something that comes up during the course, you know, let's say it's a, it's a ticketed event. That, okay. that shows up, they want to go to the ticket of event, the board vice president says oh, no, it it's goes to the, the board press, you know, whatever. Okay, the one-offs. You know, the one-offs, and do we want to say, okay, 
you know, you want to go to this ticketed event, you know, for two hundred dollars, you know, bring it to the full board. I mean, is that do we really want to want to do that for these kinds of events? I mean, I understand the reimbursements. You know, you've shelled out the money, and now you want some process for you know for getting reimbursement. But if you so, know, I, I, I you know, on the ones where money hasn't been spent, but we're sort of in this world of pre-approval, you know. Can't we say that you know the board members need to live with the decisions of the the, the board president and board vice president? And, I mean, and is not, that a no means no? That means no means no, mm -hmm. and, and that these kinds of things don't go. We, we don't. Uh, so I'm just I'm just throwing it out there in terms of a. Uh, if we're going to have a no means no uh, rule, uh, it, uh, and I guess this whole packet will come to the full board. I'll I'll think the full board would have to take me on that. Because I can I can see situations where I'm just I'm just adamant that I should have this pre approved or I should be reimbursed. Well, well I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not questioning no. the, I'm not questioning the reimbursements. I think there should be some sort of approval uh, appeal process on the reimbursements. I'm just talking about the pre approvals where no money's been spent, but we're just I really want to go to this conference, I really want to go to this event. Um, the board president, vice president, whatever, saying no to me. Um, should we? Should no we to the system covering the No cost. to the system covering the, the cost. Person can the certainly, cost because, and actually, they, you know, I mean, I guess nothing stops them from shelling out the money and asking exactly. for reimbursement later. And then going through. You know, and going, and going exactly. through an appeal process. Request for reimbursement, it does say did expense require pre approval? And if yes, did you receive pre approval? So it's silent as to if this was the type of event that needed pre approval and you didn't get pre approval, is that kind of the end of it? It kind of raises that question do they then get to put it in as a reimbursement even though it required pre approval to kind of get a second bite of the apple? I mean, I, if you, I, I think there should be an appeal process on the pre-approved. I mean, you know, and, and I have to say, as vice president right now, I mean, I'm not sure why it was, <laughs> we put it all on the board of, I mean, on the back of the vice president because, you know. I know you're a generous person. <laughs> I, no, you know, I'm the hanging judge around here, so. That's why I actually got it. <laughs> well, we just thought but that it changes there year. needed to be some level of then review. So if you made it just the board president, there wasn't kind of a second pair of eyes on it. So that's why we started with the vice president okay. thinking Because I'm not going to be very team. popular. <laughs> You're but, always popular. This is a new, but it would just be the board. So we need that opportunity for the board president to then review. But no, I, I think if it, if this is something that requires pre-approval and went through that process and it wasn't approved, that's done. I mean, it's done. You know, I think in the pre-approval there should be an appeal process. I mean, I can't even believe that we're in this world of, I mean, these are adults. They should know the meaning of him, but obviously, I mean, the last couple of days, I, Question. Um, so, well, so okay. So, the question gets back. Do we want an appeal process for preview? Yes. So, are we doing pre-approvals. So that just reverse what we just said. So I'm just saying. So no, I think on appeals. I mean. I mean, before we said no appeals so on no, pre-approvals. No, doesn't mean. No. Well, I mean. I'm sorry. Why did you say? A point of clarification. So, the appeal in, in terms of the pre approval process, the appeal would be if the vice president says mm -hmm. no, you get to go to the board president. Right. If the board president says no, that's the end of it. As opposed to contrast that to reimbursements where the vice president says no, the president says no, then they get to go to the full board because they've already expended that money. I mean, I, I, no, I think it should be the same. The, it should, you know, you should have the right to appeal to the full board, but then that's the end of it. It's done. That's the point at which no means no. You've asked both mom and dad. And, right. you know. 
and then, then you go to the full board. I mean, I, I, I think there, there should if, I think we should be consistent with them. I mean, I would, unless we, a year from now, we get to the point that. So it's not part of board meeting to handle appeals. A <laughs> board, I mean, I. I, I think at this juncture, I, I would agree that, that, that both uh, need to have that actually third step. Vice President, President. How many will have to do Debate. I, I don't know. Well, it's easier to write, so okay. It's true. So it's the same process. The process is there, even if it's not used. I mean, I think the question gets back to vice president's expenses, reimbursements, pre approvals, president's expenses. You know, I mean, how do we handle each other's? So the board president wants to go. And if the vice president says no, then it goes to the full, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, right now, we sort of have the chief of staff, so it's just sort of like the alternate person. Yeah, it's striking the balance here, right, between having approval and then having a process that has lots and lots of, and has all of this go to essentially a committee of the whole, and I think that that that's the challenge. That board item on the board agenda could be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that takes us through the um, wait, so then there's okay. the, the mileage form was also it's just as a suggestion also to slightly change the um, mileage form for board members. It's it's really it's just really leaving a larger area to explain the purpose of the challenge. Right now, it's a very compressed area. That's really what the purpose of this is. And whether or not, you know, such a form is generated. I mean, do we have the same kind of list of purpose of travel where we have this pre constituent services? That, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out. Well, again, I what I did add to the instruction board members can be reimbursed for mileage to hearings, meetings, pre approved ticket events, and other events activities related to official board business, such as MCPS constituent services. And okay. It's sort of the same, the same drill. Okay. So it's right there on the form. Uh, getting back, to, just thinking back on the, the form on the um, on the expenses, we I think. Assuming we're still going to go ahead with the cap on, on the meals, so the question is whether or not we should have something on the form that reflects the cap demand. So, you know, even though you're putting in for fifteen dollars for breakfast, and here's the actual receipt. You know, should the form reflect that? Well, the cap amount is whatever, whatever eight dollars. Whatever, 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 whatever we decide on the cap amount should that. That be reflected in the form so they know that when they submit this, this is this is the cap. So to I'll like that the form based on components. Well, what, well, I guess we have to dis decide that in terms of because at the last board, at the last meeting, we had the the guidelines that uh, Josh came up with, and the proposed guidelines talk about components. So I guess we have to make that that call on what, the, what what that is. Maybe we'll do that when we get the point on there. <laughs> no, I mean I think it's it's just a question of whether you choose no, the state I'm or the federal. And I'm after after and uh, Lara looked in more depth at, at Conus uh, uh, and it, the federal ones um, seemed more to be this more standard and more fleshed out. So there's an argument for going with those. But I think right. either way. And and like I said at the end, earlier. Rebecca had given me you know, copies of the MCPS Educational Foundation, and that's what they're using. And so. the staff use clinics. So. And I think so, to be consistent, yes. yeah. I think that's what we're doing. Whatever we agree on, I think should be Okay, helpful. so we should indicate the capital. Okay. I mean, you know, the board has devil in the detail here is that the cap depends on what, where the geography is where you're spending that money. So the well, bonus amount for well, this geographic area is different than Terre Haute, Indiana. Well, right. 
But I mean, for the most part, that you're talking about the right. local. Well, we can maybe reference it. We'll for reference local. it. Something. We'll figure out how to do it. Just so there's always a little more detail. Well, and it can change. And it can change. Just as the federal reimbursement well, that's right. so on mileage. So maybe it should just be by reference to CONUS. It's a mm -hmm. reference by incorporation. Right. Corporation by reference, rather than the actual dollar. Right. That's, and just make sure board members have that information. Right, exactly. One point for every. Okay, why don't we go through the uh, expense standards? I don't know who's present this or turn to what we're proposing on. I think I'm going to start walking you through this. Some of um, which we've already, has already been discussed during the um, uh, other portion of the meeting. There's the pre approval process, which okay. we referenced. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Just questioning the language, and I know that where it says board members conduct an official business must exercise due care and prudence when incurring expenses. And what happens if they don't? I mean, I'm just, you know, what are the consequences of not exercising due care? I think the, the consequences are that uh, that the uh, reimbursements uh, that th these rules are rules. First of all, these guidelines are guidelines that elaborate what due care and prudence are. So that's the general standard, and these are some of the specific standards. And through the approval process um, for reimbursement, essentially what these rules are saying is that if you comply with these, the presumption is that you're act exercising prudence and due care um, through the process. You know, um, in the the Ed Foundation, they picked up the language from the IRS. And I do think there's a value. I mean, it, uh, it has to have a bona fide business purpose. The IRS may view, I mean, um, yeah, generally, uh, view a disbursement as providing a personal benefit as there, if there is a doubt of business purpose. Anyway, the language taken from the IRS, I think, is stronger. Yeah, there's a, yeah, I looked at that also. I thought that you know, picking up the, it not be for lavish or extravagant right. and, and do you have a case, Josh? Yes. Okay. Anyway, I I think that the you know, do care and prudence is is not like strong enough and I would urge picking it up from what the IRS says. And the question is whether or not we have to say that failure to exercise due care and prudence, you know, the risk is that an expense may be denied. I mean, you know, what if you stay at the most expensive hotel, you know, we're traveling to, to wherever and you stay at the most expensive hotel. You know, I mean, other than, you know, I mean, obviously when we, when we go to conferences, the board selects the hotels, but I mean, if, if, there's private, if there's private travel and they, you run the risk of, um, well, the you know, of, of, of the, reimbur the reimbursement so, being denied. If, if so you, it was pre-approved and then I, when I got there, I, 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 I did an upgrade. Then, you know, if the pre-approval was for a particular Price, service, what have you. After that, it's on me. I'm just saying whether or not we should. Do we need to clarify that if we you need to if you cross if you, if you, if you beyond cross, due care and prudence? If you cross the line, you run, you run the risk of your your reimbursement being denied. I, I mean, I don't think that's assumed. But if we if we need to say it, I, guess we say I think it. we should just say it be incorporating kind of the language that Josh referenced in terms of these standards kind of outlining what that due care and prudence are if you don't follow them in other words we don't need So uh, we talked about the pre-approval process. Uh, 
little bit in terms of how that would work. Some of the items that so I think we need that thing where it says um, when we do that pre-approval, uh, we should add about, where it says, right now it says necessary to promote the board's priorities and align with work on the board. I think we need to add the cost of the event, um, or the cost of the expenditure and budgetary considerations. That's what we had in the, in the old, in, in the pre-approval form before, but I think that's something that, um, that needs to be we need to take into consideration. That was true. Yeah. Okay. that language. Yeah. Um, this is maybe a little out there, but, it, but this almost looks like the vice president and the president don't go anywhere, they just, <laughs> just sit around recruiting things. And, and, no, seriously. and for, by virtue of being officers, I think it is expected that there will be some things that the officers might be involved in as opposed to the other members. <coughs> and, and so what's that process? If one or more of the officers <coughs> is involved. Well, and I think we talked about that briefly. I mean, I guess, to the full board, I don't know. Well, on the pre approvals, I mean, it's going to be right. one doing the other, so I mean, it's. And, and if you're both, and if we going, both, you're both, go. if you're both going somewhere. So, how about we refer to fiscal management? Chair of the fiscal management board. Hopefully, that's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, but you're right. I mean, if both the board president and vice president right. want to attend the same event, I mean, there are three people on fiscal management, so. Even if both offices are somebody. Right. Okay. Fiscal management or the chair? Sure. We're ready for the next section. Right. <laughs> non local travel to meetings and conferences is defined as being business outside of my non local travel is defined as being outside of Montgomery County. And as discussed earlier, there's a now a process by which um, conferences and uh, non-local meetings would be uh, for professional development purposes would be reviewed. And then there's also uh, indication that they should uh, make travel plans in advance and take care of advantage of favorable rates. In section D, this is incorporation um, of the discussion from the last meeting, talking about how expenditures for lodging require pre-approval, and indicating that um, pretty much lodging within the 50-mile radius from Carver um, would not be approved absent some extraordinary exigent circumstances. As a follow-up to the last meeting as well, you um, uh, asked for language about car rentals. We're suggesting that that uh, car rentals require pre-approval and be authorized only where they would be cheaper or more efficient than other modes of transportation. And section F is also uh, incorporation of language from uh, discussion from discussion at the last meeting, of just to give board members a list of some items which would be reimbursed and those that would not be considered reimbursable expenses. So proposed to add room service. One could probably mount an argument that in some cases room service may be more reasonable than whatever else, but I think it, it opens up to many things. The only time I can remember, one time, uh, if one NSBA, our student board member, was ill, he was taken to a doctor, he was you know, in his room, um, that, you know, I mean, with the caveat except in case of illness, you know, but I mean, or, well, but, all of us, we have, we have some but there, I mean, I think that common sense, sense prevails, but as a general rule, I mean, as a general rule, room service is more expensive than right. if you went down to the 
hotel coffee shops. So. In pocket, that's really close. Just thinking if there was ever, and I don't have any familiarity with this, but if there was ever an instance where a hotel would not have a dining room or they would close earlier, and there would still be a need for room service for me, I don't know if that situation discussion, but it's also reflective of um, language you asked for at the last meeting, um, where you kind of indicate what items um, would be reimbursed for mileage, hearings, meeting, pre-approved ticket events, other events related, nonpartisan event, events related to official board business. Um, these events, for example, would be those that are related to education, sponsored by community organizations, or events relating to constituent service and intergovernmental relations, or MCPS. And those are really just picking up on the categories that are on the forms that we reviewed earlier. Uh, also adding language that the toll costs on the ICC are not reimbursable. <coughs> All right, moving on to number four. Um, this is really just, again, picking up on the idea of attendance at the local uh, ticket, ticketed events. And there were some suggestions earlier about um, adding language to reflect that retirement celebrations are not included, and that also um, just kind of clarifying that language about the travel related expenses and things being reimbursable because there was discussion earlier about how these items would be paid for by the board office, not necessarily the reimbursements. Item number five. Um, you will see here there's a line of oh, Going back to number four, I know we had a conversation about on, on these ticket events and they're paid for by MCPS as opposed to reimbursements by uh, paid for. We talk about setting up a category, you know, these not really be listed as, you know, that there be a separate category in terms of community outreach or something in terms of the budgetary purposes. That those not be okay. Pat O'Neill's here. Here are the costs associated with Pat O'Neill this year. I mean, these the things sort of folded into a separate budget category. So I don't know whether or not we need to reflect that, or I don't know. Is that something we, we want to do, or I don't know if it's necessary to include that in the? Uh, well, I think we're now book. we kind of have a mixture. I mean, if we went through <coughs> individual board members and, and Becky's and Roland's expenses. You see a mixture of some where individual board members are called out and some where it's just you know tickets for five tickets to answer a table for us so i mean i think there's a right now there is a, a mixture of how it's reported well the question is should we have a consistency yep, you, know, you, you know have a category called community engagement or whatever right. that's not necessarily tied to individual board members to say that they, that the system is paid for you know has a budget of uh, three thousand dollars or whatever for ticket events for for board members it just it's charged that that as opposed to you know the way we report out i guess if someone said well how much is patched up this year I think there might, and we'll probably have to get some additional clarification, but I think there's probably two different um, two different items going on. Um, I think setting up a budget, a budget category for community engagement and have it being paid out of there is one thing. I think the other part, separate from that, is then how do you track the expenditures from that budget line. I think it would still be referenced, you know, if you bought five tickets to a given event, it would still have to list the board members that those tickets were for. But those are kind of two different items. If that's a recommendation. Well, if you think about how some of the counties have a cap, you know, by board member, I mean, for their expenses, I mean, in effect, they're doing that. 
mean, you know, it included more than just ticketed events. The court included conferences. Well, I'm not looking to setting caps for board members. No, meetings, no. But I, I'm just saying whether or not they could just be, you know, I, like I said, I don't know if this needs to be included in the guidelines, but I mean, maybe that's a, a, a different conversation uh, in terms of how these things get uh, reported by, you know, by the system. Um, okay, so the, the principal's uh, president's uh, PTA dinner in the spring. Uh, most of us go. We'll say we all go. But at some point, I think that should show up in, in my expenses for what we do. So we need to go there. But maybe I'm not going to do it. I don't, you know, it's like some things like, okay, the Chamber of Commerce public safety lunch. I went as a guest in the Chamber of Commerce. And some people went, you know, by MCPS, at the MCPS. So, I mean, sometimes you have a mixture, and it used to be MCCPTA at that MCCPTA president's dinner. They paid for the board president, but other board members, the tickets were paid for by MCPS. So it's not, you're going to have a mixture, yeah. in, even in any one event. Like Judy at the MLK breakfast, she's a sponsor. She buys her own, you know, couple of tickets, and then, right. you know, the board. So, I don't know that. I mean, you wouldn't. You don't even get an accurate reflection of how many of us are at a, in a given event because you have a mixture. Of it. I think it should be a community event. I mean, and if. We're keep, you know, they put in the initials, you know, I mean, for pur purposes of RSVP and who's attending what, and that's fine. But I, I, I don't see a change needed right now to the reporting. But right, moving on to section five in terms of meals. And this is reflective of the discussion from the last meeting. Unless pre-approved, board members shall not be reimbursed for meal expenses um, for other individuals with whom they meet, such as elected letters, leaders, MCPS staff, or constituents. And here, again, for alignment purposes, we were suggesting that the actual expenses for the meals be kept at the bonus rates. Um, for, the, for the board members. For the board members. For the board and then to be reimbursed for meals, it talks about what would be needed for that. The itemized receipt with the names of the meeting participants uh, annotated on that. The purpose of the meeting and for local meals, a justified justification for why the meeting does not occur at an OCPS facility. Yeah, shouldn't we just reference the form we just developed for this? As opposed yep. to yeah, I think so. And the other thing is, the justification for why the meeting could not occur in an MCPS facility really isn't on the form. It's not. Right. So, if we're using the form, do we need to fix the form to add that, add that line? To be consistent. I just wanted to seek a little bit of clarification to say we have to set the, what the form should contain, and then the form contains that information. But this is sort of the board member's guideline rules of engagement so we should say yes, reported to the form. you have to submit the, the form, of the form. Of the right okay. not just a blanket as per the form but right knowledge so of the, the form, form has to be submitted I think I think I think the other point is this concept of having the itemized receipt where we scribble the names of the participants and the purpose of the meeting, which I think is our, we don't really have a form right now for these things. Now. We do now. But I'm just saying, but this language is almost like the old language where it sort of, con oh. you know, that sort of contemplates yeah. that, w that, that we put right. this on, on a, uh, right. that we stick it all on the receipt. And I don't really think we want to be putting all that information on. I think we want to be using it. We don't want to perpetuate that that's the standard operating procedure we want to establish that using the form is no standard. Right, right. Okay. 
So, so let me give an example. Uh, some of us have a meeting following this week. I stop to have lunch on the way home. I submit that to the office, not to the current one. Unless you're going to another meeting, that's not going to be a first. Okay, okay. Unless you're between meetings. Okay, I'm just saying, leaving here, good. You're not, you're not, that's not going to be a problem. That's going That's going to be. Yeah. Also, it is the fact that uh, board members can only seek reimbursement for their own meals. Six really just talks about the um, uh, how board members will be provided with computer equipment, telephone line, and other equipment for appropriate for our home office. And then um, the fact that if the equipment is purchased by MCPS. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. <laughs> does this does this meal section also include the out of town meals? So or that's just the it's just the home meals. So that was a question that was for follow up from the last time. Um, and my question for out of town meals is whether um, you all want to submit reimbursements like you do for local meals or whether you want to move to a per diem approach. And so uh, it can be written either way. And it, it was written in this way to contemplate that you that you submit for those meals like you submit for local, but if you decide to move to a per diem approach, um, we would write a different Well, MCPS employees have a per diem, correct? For tra out of town travel. Actually, I pulled their regulation and they also go with the. Yeah, I know they yeah. go with CONUS, but. Uh, they will be reimbursed for the actual cost of meals, including um, taxes up to the federal CONUS rate for the. So as opposed to, because I did a lot, I tried to read up on per diems and the back, you know, the pros and the cons, as opposed to, I think the other way to think about the per diem is you actually advance the money. You're given the money, and it's basically it's yours to spend. If you choose to, you know, if the conference is in this area and the set, the, the conus is seventy-one dollars, let's say, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're given that money, and then you can choose to go to the grocery store and buy yogurt and have yogurt and granola the whole time, but you still have that seventy-one dollars. And that's when, when I read up on the pros and cons, it creates it can create its own form of challenges. But the, but if we went to a per diem kind of thing where you got that, you know, that that might eliminate the reason to have credit cards. That's right. Because so you could basically say, okay, you're going to a conference, you're getting, you know, three days of. You know, fifty dollars, sixty dollars. You know, here's the, here's here's the money, and spend it as you will. Who would we be dispensing this cash? And I'm saying we could decide whether or not we want to do a cash advance or not. But I'm just and that I mean that could be a separate question. Do we want to do cash? I mean, I think some school boards, you know, they were doing cash advances. So if you go to out of town. You could decide to do it, uh, you know, in advance, or you could choose not to. But I mean, the bottom line yeah. is, you knew that, you know, you're getting you're getting a, a flat per diem, uh, whether you spend it or not, and you know, then um, if we did that, you know, it may take away any need to do credit cards, even for the other account. And like I said, the cashing is a separate issue. Whether or not you want, whether or not, whether or not you want to authorize a cash advance is a different question than just I'm, doing. The, you know, I'm not the inclined to. I, I mean, you know, looking at Fairfax County, I mean, they they are doing it for him, but it didn't indicate, you know, it was. I mean, I assume it's. Uh, Capped at the conus, right? Yeah, Tower yeah, County. The, yeah, the, the per diem is based on the conus. Right. Rate. No, no, no. I know that, but you know whether they were getting cash advances. I, I, like I said, you don't have to do a cash advance for per diem. I mean, I. I I think cap the meals at the conus rate. Even for the other town travel. 
I mean, are you saying you get actual up to the cap amount? I don't know. Because then you're getting receipts and all that. No, I think so. No, I don't. <laughs> I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balancing act, it really is. And again, just from, just because I read up on a little bit, it was very, you know, there, some people say, hey, if what you're doing is working well, don't switch it, you know. Each, each approach has its own challenges, its own opportunities. And so I think, again, what I read is, the or, an organization has to look at, decide which ones it wants to take on. Because it, it, it's a trade-off. I just was listening to reading all these auditor types and you know, people who, this is their world. And so that, that's what I took out of what I read. The problem with continuing credit cards without without travel is you know, that money is then spent. And, and even if I'm supposed to stay within a year and not charge beyond that, now you have to come, come back to me and get the difference. I, I'm saying that if you went to a per diem, you don't do the credit card. as opposed to capping the amount. And that's what you're, you're describing. Right. With so deciding to cap the amount that you can spend at the per diem, at, tie it to the per diem rate, tell us. But you would, you'd say, but what happens if somebody then has gone ahead and used the credit card and gone beyond it? Yeah, I mean, that's, then you're asking for reimbursement and all that. I mean, I, I think that, that, I don't, I don't want to get in the world to try and get reimbursements for going over capital amounts. No, I don't know what you I think I missed you. Uh, I participated in some teacher recruitment trips prior to my retirement. And we were we were given per diem on that. I'm not sure if that's still the practice. Yeah. Well, we have the choice of saying pretty much continue the way we're doing it for out of travel. Basically get your actual, whatever your actuals are. We use our credit cards and we're, we get actual expenses subject to that we're not in the world of, you know, extravagant. Or um, we go to a per diem where we just get a flat amount whether or not you use the per diem or not, you just get the flat amount. I mean, some of it, even in the world of, you know, in a restaurant, if we're all together, if they're giving us eight receipts, and then we have or seven receipts and a student board member, or, I mean, it's one thing when you walk up to a McDonald's, you know, you can get, but, you know, some restaurants aren't in the land of giving you know, eight receipts at, at, at a dinner. I mean, it's the expectation would be everyone bring cash. <laughs> well, everyone bring cash and they contemplate that you've gotten the free advance. I mean, Pat's is contemplating you're still putting it for reimbursement. How do you manage I, I, I don't you know. Mechanics of it. I mean, you could have one member submit and clearly itemize that there are seven other members on that account. And that should be somebody who's on fiscal management. This is going to have to be somebody who can track expenses. I think my inclination is for out of town travel. Let's leave it for now. Come back. Leave it as is. Leave it as is. Can you keep it mm -hmm. Just for out of town. For the out of town. So that's the earlier recommendation was to keep the credit cards for out of town travel. Go to actual expense. You get actual reimbursements subject to that we're not. You know, being and you know, at a subsequent or whatever, you know, whatever. At a subsequent date, we, we have the fall of May and the spring, and SP 
FDA that would be a good barometer. I think after the is, MS, is it, I mean after May, it could be. Is, is, it, is it working uh, as we hoped or not? Right. So then we need to clarify this language that, um, for out of town travel. Right, so that five becomes local meals and we have a statement about out of town meals. Out of town meals. But I think we strict, you know, adding a language without, you know, due care and prudence, or no lavish, no room service. Six. Um, there uh, also in B, that was, language was added as a result of the last meeting that uh, board members will be reimbursed for internet access and te uh, telephone calls related directly to board business. Um, with the contemplation being that they would then have to also submit that reimbursement form. For <coughs> well, I have a question about that. I mean, I have not done submitted for internet access because, you know, I mean. My husband works at home sometimes. I work, you know, do and so what portion of the um, internet in my house is really due to MCPS? What portion is due to my husband's employer? What portion is us surfing the web, you know, on personal stuff? What portion is the probably twenty three hours a day when you're not doing either one? <laughs> right. Uh, I'm just saying, I mean, I mean you know, so, I mean, I mean, how often are people on the internet, you know, I mean, are actually on the right. computer, and, you know, know, so who pays for the, the unused internet access? I, I, so I don't know. I mean, you know, when I first was elected to the board, you know, they put in three phone lines into the house, a telephone line, a computer line, and a, a fax line. You know, and things have changed. Then I, you know, when everything became wireless, I had to get you know, a wireless internet, but I don't, I don't, I don't collect, but I mean, it just, I, I don't know how we should proceed on this, because um, I guess I have questions about just the general, okay, M MCPS, um, I mean, you know, and I don't know how people really operate without having internet at home. I mean, we, we have tons of families in Montgomery County that don't, but, you know, as a board member, I'm expected to do my board work, my board docs, read all my materials at home on my little laptop, but, you know, what, how much of the home internet, and we don't give that to our other employees, home internet. I, uh, I guess I'm kind of weird. Where you are, I don't know how, you, how one determines, you know, what is MCPS, what is not. I also look at it this way: how many of us, upon leaving the board, would stop internet service? Uh, I mean, it's 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 nice to have it. I, I don't use it. To, I, I, don't, I don't file for that expense, and I just think it falls into that into that gray area. And there, there is a challenge because these bills aren't broken out, but that's not how the providers do it. So, um, well, I was going to say, again, well, actually, some do. And I don't know if this helps, you know, inform the conversation here, but in my conversation with council staff, I asked them about internet access and they said that they don't. But council has had a big challenge with cell phones because, again, this is my understanding. If I don't have it correct, somebody needs to actually talk to them directly. So I'm not the source on this. So just, Know that, but my understanding is that you know council members attempted to try to keep their personal cell phone set so put from their work cell phone, and it just got so complicated. And so they come to an arrangement where the council member pays their own their own cell phone, but a portion of it the cost is defrayed by the county, or the council budget, or whatever, as a way of. How do they determine the portion? I don't know. I don't have that. I mean, I, it was not that level of a conversation. I, mean, but I have a BlackBerry from MCPS. I have a personal cell phone. I mean, I think every, Phil walks around with two. Everybody, exactly. I think, I mean, so that's, you know. No, I no, mean, but I was saying using that as a way to address the internet. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just. Pro rate? Yeah, something like that. I mean. I'm not suggesting for cell phones. You can't be, you can't even be a board candidate without having internet at home. 
because everybody, everybody sends you their questionnaires electronically. So, I mean, you're not arriving here, you know, if you stood the electoral process with now right. without having the internet at home. So, of course, one could argue that's a Well, I don't know, but and that also may be a difference in the speed of internet access you may need for your own personal life versus being able to get on board docs and not have it just sit there forever while it's trying to process the information. I just said I mean, what this, I have. This may fall into the category of what, you know, I mean, some folks may not have it and you want folks who don't have the resources to have that in their home, do you want to basically, you know, if they need, if this is something they need to do their board business, and certainly you need to get onto board docs, and you need to, you know, right now we've gone much more internet reliant than we probably were when this, well, and we wanted, you know, when I, you know, mean, when, when, when I when had it, my computer on. Right, right. I mean, so, so one way to do this would be like, the approach that you were taking for meals would be to cap it at some dollar amount that, uh, would be a, a guesstimate of what's a reasonable amount to be spending. You know, if we, if we counted it at $25 a month, or like $50 a month, or what have you. I can go either way. I mean, I don't, it's not. Plenty of interesting where our topics are. I mean, I doesn't keep us from making a recommendation. But. I mean, I, I have a problem with the whole thing, your whole internet bill being reimbursed, because truly, is it all in CPS? And I do appreciate that, some, you know, somebody may be running for the board that doesn't have internet. But, you know, inter, you know, even people who may not have home, home computer have smartphones to read. And I think I would cap it at some amount. And I think that's what our recommendation should okay. be. What was the amount? Uh, I don't know. I don't pay the internet bill, so <laughs> I don't. What, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, mean, I do pay it. I'm not sure I know what it is. But does anybody know like what the, what the range is? Was it like 30 to? Mm -hmm. Somewhere between 30 and 60. Probably 30 and 60. Can you cap it at 30? But, but that's a choice you make. That no, no, I'm saying in terms of, I don't know what the, I don't know what the speed required, I don't know at what juncture in internet speed well, you experience Well, when you jump up to that down. business level, yeah. it's an, ex <laughs> an expensive deal. I mean, if you want to download a, I, I think we cap it at $30. Well, I'm adding consistent with Mike said, propose it and see if there's something that you aren't, you know, know about. Them. Is on this one, subscriptions to local newspapers. I mean, uh, this is probably old language, but you know, right now, about everything is, you know, if you want the Washington Post or whatever, you've got to pay a subscription. And is, it, is that actually something that the board should be paying for? I mean, I understand Education Week and some professional journals, but I don't know that we should be paying for access to, to local newspapers. I don't know that there is any. I don't, I don't know that I don't know that anyone's been asking for it, but I don't know whether or not that's something. That At one point be. in time, I I had a subscription to the Friday Gazette, but I. I'm not saying everything. Well, or not. In recent years, people have not been asking. But I mean, that could be more of an issue because more and more well, papers are asking. You know, you gotta. And we get know, daily you, you, clippings. I mean, right. we get. Electron every morning we'll read it with the daily. I think we should strike that. I think so too. I mean, professional publications. Professional publications. Although it is a good question. That's true. Okay. I can raise the number.
7, <coughs> credit card authorization. This is the language that says it's still sold at pre approved non local travel. And indicating how other expe eligible expenses would then have to be reimbursed. There was a question that came up at the last board meeting about authorization limits. Um, there is a, author a limit imposed by American Express of $2,500 a month for a $2,500 one time transaction. There was a question about what those limits were. Any changes in the So, two, two questions. I mean, should we fall on credit cards or purchase cards? I mean, well, they're moving to MasterCard. So will if that be a credit card or a purchase card? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just saying, I, mean, I don't know if there's any significance to one section says credit cards and the other section says purchase cards. Well, number seven, it really should, they are technically purchase cards, not credit cards, even though that's the term that's, kind of, that's frequently used. And I guess my so, tell me, tell me, I, I, I'm not sure I, I, I use them interchangeably. And I'm, I won't even profess to be the expert on that, so if someone else has another idea. But my understanding is that these are used for purchases, which is different than a credit card where you have, it's somehow or another tied to your credit history. I can get clarification, mm -hmm. but that's kind of my Should understanding. Should this be credit card yeah. slash purchase? Because, I mean, it may be something that may change from time to time and then you know, I think in the the general public, they're viewed as credit cards. You know, it's a term of art, even if it's technically a purchase right. card. So I think just put credit card slash purchase. And my second question on there is, we added the language that says, well, actually, this whole section is new. It says failure to follow our, po our policies and regulations may result in revocation of card use privileges or other appropriate action. I guess the question is who decides whether or not we're going to be revoking anyone's credit card. Well, <laughs> 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 you know, I'm the Hagen judge, so. <laughs> 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 on the roll already. <laughs> well, I, I think we need to, you know, I mean, right now that's, that's in the, the, um, Form that we sign on yeah. credit cards no. that, that, that could misuse could, uh, right. could result in, in loss of the card, but it's not really clear as to is that the superintendent's decision, is that the board's decision. I mean, we need to establish some sort of a say process <laughs> <laughs> where we're the, you know a, a deciding official for revocation yes. of the card. If we got to that point, I, I, I think. I think that's a recommendation to the board. Uh, okay, but I'm just saying, board pre you know, I mean, who makes the recommendation to the board? I mean, who, ma who makes that threshold decision of X's, you know, abusing their card? And, um, but I mean, it's not like just come to the full board all by itself. I mean, someone has to make the recommendation to the full board. Who want to vote on? I mean, it could be one of the officers that are abusing the privileges. Just to touch it, we may want to um, give some 
uh, flesh the cross plate or just leave it at that. That's, that was a decision to defer to you all for whether that's sufficiently enumerated. talks about how the um, expenses related to the operation of the board as an entity um, will be um, at the discretion of the board's chief and staff in consultation with the board offers, board officers, board staff, that may be issued purchase cards for expenses, again, related to the operation of the entity, and that staff is subject to the um, expense policy and regulations of the NCPS staff. Number 10 is kind of a little bit of things. Um, what about meals? For meals, I mean, like, um, and maybe it's not different, but I mean, if, if, if Roland goes out or Chief of Staff goes out for meals, it's subject to, it would apply to us or the board of people that apply to MCPS staff. Can you pay for a third party? I don't believe that the staff will make that either. And then I guess it becomes a, a question of how you would like to proceed. I think board office rules should be applied to everyone in the board office as well as board. I'm just saying, I mean, I mean this says that the board staff is subject to the MCPS staff rules as opposed to subject to the, the, the staff rules do in certain circumstances. They don't prohibit taking somebody out. Circumstances, you'd ask for if there was some situation that arise uh, in the future. I agree with the extenuating circumstances section, but, but who is the authorizer? It says the board reserves the right to authorize. So, practically speaking, how does that play out? I mean, what was the language in that other? Was it Carol King? No, it was Carol King. So right, so right now, we, it's been right time to say that it would require pre-approval, and then you put back the pre-approval process, and it would go to uh, the vice president, because that's who does all pre-approvals. Um, Boy, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be camped <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, but, but the, so let's say there's some type of an emergency. That's what cell phones are for. It says, um, at least for Carroll County, unique circumstances may require action outside these guidelines. If such a situation arises, board members should use good business judgment. When possible, the circumstances should be reviewed with the board's president prior to the event. Going into extenuating, or some of it being folded into the extenuating circumstances. And so, are we anticipating pre approval there? Or, um, because I think uh, Mr. Grissom makes the good point that if it's truly extenuating circumstances, you're not going to have time to submit a form and find the, maybe find the, the full process. Right. No, that I, <clears throat> I 
I think at some point people are going to have to make a certain call and you have to raise some questions that, that can be dealt with later. <coughs> We're not the legislators. Yeah. I'm in the ambulance and I forgot to approve it. So I'm sorry, the consensus then is to fold in the Carroll language? Yes. yes. Substitute it? Substitute okay. for the last sentence. And then after 10, the next section just kind of outlines the um, process for the procedure for processing the monthly credit card loans request for reimbursement. Well, actually, there won't be monthly credit card loans, except in the case of non-local travel. Um, but request for reimbursement and other expense forms. So we need to clarify what we talk about in terms of the superintendent. Language on the ethics panel controls that's a little bit different. That language seems to be a little bit different than where we added provided such concerns fall within the jurisdiction of the panel. That's not in our current language. I know we have a procedure for referral to the ethics panel, but um, that's not. But I think that the, the challenge is that the ethics panel is set up to uh, review complaints pursuant to the policy. So our referral there um, that's outside the jurisdiction of what they do may, may be unhelpful and necessary to say, but there was a sense that um, that might help focus on what what would be appropriate to refer to the ethics panel here, which is more in the nature of conflict of interest and the like uh, than a question of is this something uh, uh, is, is, is it kind of prudent? And I guess, and that's why I, I appreciate that. I guess the question is, is this, do we need to have this language or something like this language in with our dispute process? Because right now we're saying the board president refers the matters to the full board. If there's a disagreement, and this sort of like talks about the, you know, the ethics panel getting involved. Um, it is, you know, so where, where does the ethics panel fit in in the dispute process? I would say that um, the board really is the decision maker, the interpreter ultimately. of the events, ultimately. And if there is a dispute about whether or not an expense is covered under these expense guidelines, standards, et cetera, that's a decision for the board to make, to kind of interpret its own um, mm -hmm. expense standards. But, and there can be a dispute whether or not they're covered under the expense standards. That's really the board's purview. The ethics panel would only be involved, not in a dispute resolution, but if there was something that arose that fell under the ethics policy. That's not necessarily a dispute. That may be a concern that falls within the jurisdiction of the ethics panel, and therefore, I'm excuse me, the ethics policy, and therefore the ethics panel. I'm just saying right now, so our dispute resolution process says, question, uh, should a question arise as to whether an expense is permitted, the matter shall be referred to the board, to the board president for a ruling. The board president may refer the matter to the full board. We talked about having some sort of a, a clarifying language, I guess, for board members to actually raise a dispute. I'm just saying, is, you know, does the board president know which, you know, which things he refers to the ethics panel versus which things he refers to the full board? I would say yes. <laughs> um, if it's a question about whether an expense is permitted under the guidelines, that goes to the board. If it's something that falls under the ethics policy, it goes to the ethics panel. Okay. Could you give me an example of what would fall under the ethics policy? Um, the ethics policy itself involves conflict of interest. It in view, um, involves um, situations where you're assisting other people for or using your abusing your position for private gain of another. 
that's different from whether my parking expense is indeed covered under these guidelines as they're written. So as this plays out, it sounds like we really don't see a, a regular active role okay. in mileage expenses, pre-approval, etc. for the have we ever used them under our handbook? Is, it, is there ever been a matter that's ever been referred to the ethics process? Not in the um, only section that, that we haven't referenced is really just the board's fiscal management committee reviewing on a an semi-annual basis summary reports on the status of expenditures having an external audit of expenditures conducted annually, and then training for board members, staff, and newly elected board members on a regular basis. So what exactly does the Fiscal Management Committee, okay, they're going to review, and then, then what happens? I mean, are they reviewing and approving, or are they reviewing and, I mean, what exactly is that, you know, what, what exactly is contemplated in this? Review process. I think that's not an approval process. That's a process of like the um, many, many, the many other month, many other semi-quarterly, monthly, uh, annual reports the board receives. It's um, a um, over time. What are the patterns? And sometimes you, that that informs forward-going policy uh, or procedures or guidance expenditures in general cases. And here it may uh, affect. Um, what decisions we all make about what events should be on the pre-approval list going forward and the like. I mean, I think we'll have to work with the Fiscal Management Committee to design those reports and figure out what, we, what will be meaningful to the committee to look at right. to figure out if, in fact, any action needs to be taken. Right? So I think this is going to be an ongoing product. Yeah. And that next okay. sentence about the external audit annually, that, that's new language. Is that that's what happened? That's what so we decided for the last year to put that in. Actually, gone through the forms. So, the next step on this will be us staff providing us with the revised draft. So, we should meet one more time prior to it going to the full board on July 28th. And do you know, at the top of the meeting, we talked about the ticketed items. Are we going to, at that juncture, make the list to give to the full board recommended list? Why don't we have maybe staff come up with a proposal on which ticketed items um, and which conferences? Um, and we can basically also you know, come to a consensus or on that. So make an initial cut on which 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 of the ticketed items are you know are